What is it that you think students get out of history teaching at its very best? A sense of that all people aren't the same and that, that um, it is possible to a certain extent to get into the head of someone else and have some sense of how it looks, the world looks from a different point of view. I think more than anything else, that's for me what, what students got out of history. Or that what may seem to be very clear mm. and self-explanatory may not be. Yes. Mm -hmm. And that there are many questions that remain to be answered. You're trying to stimulate an intellectual curiosity, mm. uh, develop a confidence, I think, as Alan says, but also a humility and a tolerance. A friend of mine years ago, who, who was both a historian and a Buddhist, uh, suggested that the most radical thing we could do as historians would be to look at the past as if everyone had always been right. And that if we were in that position with all those experiences and, and that background, we would do the same thing. We would understand that. Uh, it's a hard thing to do. It's a hard discipline. I don't make it with certain people. Uh, there, there are people I just can't go there with, and maybe I shouldn't. Uh, but it strikes me that that's something we have to give the students, that aspiration to understand. And that maybe what you're suggesting is that we need to take more of that into our classes themselves, not just the subject matter, but also the students. Maybe we need to understand that some of the students that are failing, it's appropriate to fail. And some of the students uh, are, are you know, doing what they need to do in different ways. Well, there's something there about sort of in a way uh, encouraging the students towards a growing awareness in all sorts of different dimensions rather than too quick a judgment which I think is partly what you're objecting to and sometimes I think we don't give them time to do that we make them evaluate as we say and that then does lead to a hierarchy of judgment in a way too quickly and maybe that relates back to the Buddhist thing which is about attentiveness to an extent and first developing that in Well, I think we're, I mean, I think there is a problem. And, and the problem is this, that we're sort of assuming that they come in and they're blank slates. Mm -hmm. And we can do whatever we want with them. Um, and part of the reason they're so different from each other is, of course, that they're not blank yes. slates. Mm -hmm. um, and they come into us, into American schools, after, you know, 13 years of K-12 teaching. The kind of moral judgment students make about people in the past, the reason why they can't look at the past and say, I'm going to inhabit this place where I see this person as right, is one, they've been taught to make moral judgments about the past. That's what his history is for. And two, they associate things like making moral judgments by understanding the past with condoning horrible things that people have done in the past. Um, and, and that may be where the analogy of thinking everybody's right is going to be really problematic sure. for some of them. You know, they don't have to think it's right. They have to see how it, how it was right for those people or how pe those people thought that it was yeah. right. Yeah. yeah, that's right. And it's a very right. complicated, I mean, we yeah. find yeah. that we're basically trying to undo everything. But ideally, how would you like your students to leave you? What would you, what would you like them to leave with? Well, a lot less certainty than they came in. <laughs> <laughs> That's certainly a piece of it. Mm -hmm. I think yeah. we, we, we'll probably all say, wouldn't we, that we, uh, because we are teaching history, we, we have this, this love of the subject, mm -hmm. this, this, I don't know if it's the right word or not. We, we, we want them, because they also, to an extent, must have that, if they come to us voluntarily, to develop that same sort of uh, uh, inspiration, feeling that we have, um, that they would hopefully be able to um, become historians in a broad sense uh, in the way that, that, that we have. Um, uh, perhaps not in the sense of becoming a professional historian, but, the, but the, they would, if you like, deepen and extend their understanding of history, but not just of history in, in, in the sense of you know, knowing what's in books and what's in uh, what they, 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 they acquire in lectures, but equally, if, because they engage with history experientially, in other words, I guess they're working in the manner of research historians, then it would seem to me that, that I, I think I would have that aspiration for them to become better at being historians 
by a considerable degree, hopefully, at the end of a degree course, than they were when they came. But I'll tell you your point, Paul, that, that some won't be. I mean, mm. the issue of value added is an interesting one here, isn't it? I mean, the baby students who come to us who've got very highly developed uh, historical skills at level one, um, they, they don't necessarily progress at all as they go through the degree course because, you know, they can cope and they can, and they're okay. But uh, I, I don't meet many students like that. Mm. Uh, and and the, 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 the one, my ones, I think, I mean, this is again part of the satisfaction of teaching, I suppose, because they start from probably a very low level, uh, certainly in terms of their own confidence and, their, own, and their, their, their understanding of their own abilities or lack of understanding of their own abilities, that actually they, I think, do get quite a bit of value added, or I hope they do, by the time they leave. But it, it, but it also transcends, mm. it? I mean, what, we've, mm. what we've not discussed at all is how far we should, we, we we're teaching the type of transferable mm. skills that uh, because our students are not going to be historians, they might well acquire through history courses that are going to stand them in good stead for whatever they do in life thereafter. And what this, are those things? Well, I mean, I increasingly have, we used to call them generic skills, now mm. we call them transferable skills. They're, they're learning ways to think and perform like historians, even if they're not historians. If they become a public servant or if they become a teacher, the way they approach a problem will still reflect that, that disciplinary training. And uh, coming back to the original question, I mean, it, I guess it sounds a little bit grandiose, but I, I want them to leave as better citizens. Right. Yeah. Uh, I want them to, to leave knowing that they can have an impact on the present and the future and that one of the ways that they can contribute to society in having an impact on the present and the future is that their knowledge of how the past informs the present and will inform the future is a tool that they can bring to the, to the party. I mean, I think we've got to be as grandiose as that. I think it's true. And I would say in my case, I would like, I would like my students to um, think of people who are outside of their cultural zones to be more curious and try to understand people in their own mm -hmm. terms mm -hmm. and I think that if I uh, if they are uh, able to try to feel for a little bit um, the the way other people see the world mm -hmm. I think I would have succeeded and I think that that would make for better citizens of, of the of the 21st century yeah I would agree with that I think a sort of wider awareness not just about the subject but for me, it has to be something about themselves, the awareness they have of, of themselves has developed. And also their awareness of, of others and the society that they live in. And for me, that would be the perfect history education one that was much more uh, holistic or, or integrative, if you like. And so those are the capacities. Suppose I'm seeing them in a much more personal and human way than transferable Skills. I, 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 there are different dimensions of this, aren't there? I, mean, I, I, I go in with, with the, the sort of you know, morality arguments, um, and you know, it's Peter Stern's sort of point, isn't it? The history is a vast database upon which students can draw that will impact on their understanding of moral values, of citizenship, of identity. I mean, all those are important dimensions, mm -hmm. but from the, the average student that I come across, that doesn't really enter to any great extent into, mm. I, don't, I don't think, into their consideration. What they're interested in at the end of it is, of, of the degree course is, will my degree get me a better job? Mm. Now, I, I don't like that uh, in, in many ways, but I can see why uh, people would come you know, from that particular perspective. And I think we're going to take that on board as well. Now, if that means, therefore, we've got to be able to say to students, well, OK, by being historians, um, and acting in the, the manner of historians, you can acquire the sort of skills that are going to help you mm -hmm. in the world of employment. Uh, fine, that's part of the issue. And the other part of the issue is, can they then recognise that they've acquired those skills and argue that they've got those skills in particular contexts when it comes to the employment that they're trying to g go into? Mm -hmm. That goes back to what Paul said, though, about the nature of teaching and the inadequacies in many ways of the kinds of teaching we do because we have large classes and large numbers sure. of students. Um, what we do a lot of, and particularly when we lecture, is we let our students watch us do analysis. Yeah. Now, I went to a dance um, and at an academic conference, amazingly enough, and I asked someone to dance and he said, um, I don't dance. Well, then he said, well, I could dance. Um, I've been watching people. So we do a lot of that. We expect our students to go out and dance when all they've been doing is watching us dancing. Mm -hmm. 
And so to change, I mean, and it also relates to your question of progression, of individual research, of practice and analysis, and all of those things. To the degree that as a profession we're still instructing students by giving them analyses of the past, we're not going to get most of them there. We'll get the ones who came in with the fine skills who can see where we're doing the analysis. And the others will think that we're simply telling them a wonderful story. Right. Um, th if there's something I think that we need to, that we're teaching ultimately, is to teach people how to think. Mm. Yeah. And the only way we can get them there is by giving them the opportunity to think by themselves and develop in that area. They can find skills that will get them to be, have other professors, uh, professions and, car and careers for sure. But what a historian can give them is uh, the ability to think and to ask the questions, yep. Yep. and to seek answers, and to look at evidence, and, and, and filter that evidence, so mm. on and so forth. And, but that has to be, and this comes back to learning by doing, in some mm. ways, that they've got to be doing things, haven't mm. they? Which comes yeah, back yeah. to Jeff's point. Mm -hmm. And maybe that's been the biggest change that's happened over exactly. the last uh, few decades. Yeah. Yeah. Although yeah. it goes back to the point I was trying to make at the beginning, I think, between, uh, of the balance between the type of lecturing you're mm -hmm. talking about uh, here, and the and the seminars that go with them, and the more experiential stuff. Now, I, you know, the, I, I, I'm not sure we've got the balance right mm -hmm. from the point of view of individual students. Mm -hmm. 